All right, welcome back. So I wanted to um, just have a conversation today about heat pumps, um, pros and cons. You know, here in the Great Lakes area, um, we have builders that do, you know, a lot of gas. Uh, we nearly exclusively do heat pumps. Mm -hmm. um, and though, you know, one of the, the arguments about you know, or against heat pumps has been that they, they don't work in cooler temperatures. They run and they perform down into the 40-ish degrees, some of them 50, depending on the model. Uh, I'm not big on swimming when it's really colder than 50. Me either. That's, uh, that's a whole nother. Now, there are, in fact, heat pumps that'll you know, warm, you know, the pool and, and can pull heat out of that cold air, even yep. as low as, you know, 40 and high 30s. Not really a thing here in, in Ohio so much, but um, what are your what are your thoughts in terms of gas versus uh, versus heat pumps? Um, the only other area where gas has an advantage over a heat pump is the rate of heat that you can get out of it. Sure, the recovery rate. Okay. Yep. Um, other than that, gas loses across the board. Um, Longevity of the unit itself, cost to operate it, right? So your cost per dollar of, you know, for heat is drastically lower with, with a heat pump. Um, heat pump has a, a pretty steep initial um, cost, but I would say within two, three years at the most, you, re you recover all that. Uh, maybe would, maybe one, just depends on how warm you want your pool, yeah, right? But Yeah, yeah well, we, and we've experienced, uh, you know, installations where, you know, the, the families came back and said, hey, we use this many more kilowatt hours. We, we basically determined that, uh, you know, it, it costs about 300 bucks in the spring and 300 bucks mm -hmm. or so in the fall. In most cases, um, you know, a gas heater is going to be twelve or, or thirteen hundred dollars, you know, in the spring and, and again in the fall to heat the heat the pool. Yeah, you're paying for a gas heater in gas every year, um, so just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Now the operation's a little bit different, and maybe this is where some people get, uh, you know, intimidated or confused or things get gray, but. Um, when it comes to operating your heat pump, let's say as, as we go into to a spring season, uh, the, the customer's pool is open, it's running, it looks nice and pretty, but it's you know 70 degrees or, or in the high 60s. How should that pump, the circulation pump and ultimately the heat pump, how should that be operated to get the most bang for the dollar? So, not to get too off subject, but I always recommend opening at least two weeks before you anticipate swimming. Um, so now a lot of times you have to schedule your opening the year before, but just go with whatever you've been doing in previous seasons and where you feel comfortable opening up your pool. But you need to get it clean first of all. And then um, what you wanna do is look for the warmest day all right, if you're looking to squeeze value out of this heat pump, you only want to run it during the day, all right? When it's uh, the warmest ambient temperature around this heat pump it is going to be, um, again, not to get too far off subject, but the only time I recommend people turning their pump off is to do exactly that, is to make sure that the heat pump doesn't run at night. You can utilize the timer for the pool pump to soot to pump off at night. That way you're only using it during the day. Or a lot of people have told me that they just don't mind coming out there and turn, literally turning it on and off to leave the pump running. I am not going out to do anything at night and to <laughs> turn anything on or off, but uh, I, I, end up, I end up recommending the same, you know, when I'm talking to families, um, turn the, the pool pump on in the nine, 10, maybe, maybe 11 o'clock hour, mm -hmm. uh, and then run that depending on the size and the, and the circulation rate needed. So, you know, six or seven at night. And that's going to, since the pump's running, the heat pump's going to run yep. and they're going to get the most BTUs out of the same dollar of electricity. Yep. Now we've always got those customers that, you know, it just doesn't matter. They want to run it 24 hours a day, even if it gets cool tonight and that's fine. That's, that's what I was going to say. Um, a lot 
the way we size our heat pumps, you're going to need very uh, little more than two days worth of running it, right? That's not 24 hours. That is two, you know, the sun is up. Um, so if you, if you want to swim tomorrow, you're going to have to run it all the time and, and, you know, it costs you a little bit more, but you'll be swimming tomorrow. And, and, and that's sometimes not easy for a, for a, a pool owner to, to quite grasp. If, if it's sunny and 72 degrees, that's great. Their heat pump is going to work and it's going to be efficient, but that's not the same as the air being 90, for example, mm. they're going to get a lot more heat. Yep. put into the, their pool for that same dollar. Yeah, the the difference between the air that it's using to draw the heat out of and how cold the pool water is, the bigger that delta, the more heat's going into the water. Yeah. Sure, so. Now, a whole nother uh, aspect to heating your pool um, uh, and things to consider while you're, while you're picking out a heat pump um, is a chiller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will tell you, a couple years, few years ago, um, I would have, and I did, kind of poo-poo this idea, uh, particularly in this area. Now, if you're in, yeah. in Florida or in the southern states, obviously a chiller makes sense. Um, but one of the benefits to having a chiller uh, is that, you know, if, if you have an automatic cover, for example, yep. it brings that pool water down. 94, yeah, listen, my wife likes 94, right? Most people don't like 94. Right. And getting it down into that refreshing range is, is very, um, very nice, especially yeah. 4th of July. Yeah, here in the Midwest, we'll have, you know, some fluke weather, right? Um, we're using the air conditioner and the heater in the same day a lot of times in Ohio. And sometimes in Ohio, you can have a hot summer. If people aren't comfortable leaving that cover off at night, if they have an automatic cover, if they're not comfortable with that for safety reasons, they're heating the pool up. And I've seen pools reach mid high nineties easy. Yeah. And if that's your case, you're, you're, you know, you might want to consider getting a chiller. Um, cause literally the only way to cool your pool down is to let that evaporate and take the heat with it. Yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, appreciate the conversation and, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Yep. See ya.